one of the classic Heifmans that people always talk about is the HE400Is. Uh, that was a, a very big Heifman headphone from back in the day. And now they've refreshed it with the 400i 2020, kind of a refresh uh, and a slight retake on the classic 400i. Unfortunately, I don't have any experience with the classic 400i, so I can't make comparisons of sound quality compared to that one. I think I heard it once when my friend Dan brought it over. Um, I don't remember much about it, and I'm not even sure if it was 100% the 400i, uh, but essentially I have zero experience with that headphone. So I'm gonna be coming at this from kind of a new, fresh perspective of like, how does it stack up in today's market. Speaking of today's market, uh, this headphone is not just a refresh, it is also a pretty big price drop. On their website, although I can't find new listings now, uh, they list the original sale price, which I'm sure got knocked down a little bit over time, but the original sale price was 449 for the original 400 eyes. These are coming in at new, $169. So this makes for some interesting comparisons in the price range and also puts it in an odd spot in Heifman's lineup. And we're gonna talk about all that today in this first impressions video. So the most obvious physical change is definitely gonna be the headband. If you're a previous 400i owner, this is gonna be the thing that immediately stands out. Yes, it is very, very close and similar to the Diva. Um, it's just blacked out, but essentially, they're pretty much identical in terms of the fit, the feel, and the build. Now, I do think if that was a 400i that my friend Dan brought over, that the yokes have been upgraded because these ones are metal. I remember that headphone had plastic yokes and I actually thought that they felt really cheap. These ones feel nice. Now I will say this, this headphone, for whatever reason, I think the magnet structure in here is a little bit heavier and denser than the magnets on the Diva, but this feels like a more substantial headphone than the Diva. Not by a lot, uh, but it does feel, I don't know, less cheap. It feels very nice for the price range to be completely honest with you compared to some of its competitors, especially the pads. These are the nicest Heifman pads any price, Susvara, Aria, doesn't matter. These are the nicest, at least by feel. I don't know how long they're gonna last, but you know, time will tell on that. Uh, they are softer and the leather feels thicker, but like plusher, it feels, uh, I don't know, it just feels really nice. Now the pad size is pretty familiar. You know, it's got this kind of a Sundara size headphone, maybe a little bit bigger than the Sundara for the actual ear hole. I do wish they, even if they wanted to keep the circular outside shape, I do wish they would make the insides of these oval just to accommodate a few more ears than they already do because some people do have fit issues. So the headband here is going to be something that you either love or you hate. I think it offers a slimmer design. It doesn't have that big bulk, bulky uh, suspension arm on the top. Um, and it feels more in line with something like a I don't know, 4XX, which is also one of its competitors that we'll talk about. Um, now, for me, this is an upgrade over the suspension strap. I'm not a huge fan of suspension straps most of the time. I find them just okay. But notably, because of kind of the radius of this, this is gonna be something where it's either gonna fit your head and it's gonna be fine, or it's not gonna fit your head and it's gonna be really annoying and you're probably gonna get hot spots on the insides if you have, let's say, a square-shaped head or you might get a hot spot on the top if you have kind of an egg-shaped head. Okay, so let's talk briefly about sound quality and some of the competitors for this. So main competitors, in my opinion, based off the sound quality that I'm hearing out of this, is definitely gonna be the HD 58X and the 4XX. Uh, this is not something that I think competes on the level of the Sundara. I don't think it replaces that headphone, so if you have it, be confident with your purchase. Now, notably, it's kind of unfair to compare that because these are a little more than half the cost of the Sundara, uh, but I think the Sundara sounds better. Now, regarding the Diva, uh, interestingly, this headphone sounds to me like what the Diva was supposed to be, um, at least in the wired formation. This sounds a little bit better to me. Uh, the high resolution was a problem for me with the Diva. It, was, it created a lot of top end, but it didn't have the resolution to kind of back up what it was trying to put out. This does. Uh, it doesn't resolve nearly as well as the Sundara, for example, uh, but for the price range, the resolution in the top end, the forwardness of the top end is actually quite nice. It does have a few peaks here and there, um, but they're not overly sharp or overly harsh or anything that I would consider particularly troubling. And that may change with a little bit of burn-in. And as I analyze it a little bit deeper for the full review, 
we'll see. Now, some of the other comparisons like the HD 58X and the 4XX, so these are more mid-range focused, right? They, they've always been that. They're a highly mid-rangey, very intimate headphone. And that's what you're gonna get with this. You're gonna get a warm, lush, filled out mid-range. This is a little bit more sparse than the mid-range. It's a little bit thinner. It doesn't quite have the same warmth or lushness to it. It's a little bit colder and more clinical. But what this does have over the 58X is soundstage. And they soundstage quite a bit better than the 58X. It even, to me, sounds better, and I don't have it here, but I think I'm gonna try and uh, borrow one for the full review, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, but I think it even sounds like it's better than the 4XX, and it's better for resolution than the 4XX, but I believe that the 4XX has more bass response. Um, this is good bass. It's better bass than what is on the 5.8X, uh, but it doesn't completely blow me away for the price range, considering something like the 4XX I think is a bit stronger. So I've had this for less than 24 hours now. So my first impressions so far is that this is a very clean iteration of a planar. It's not a particularly warm planar. It's not a uh, particularly intimate planar. It is more of a clinical, wide sound saging, very technical feeling planar magnetic headphone. Now what I'd like to see added over time and as I analyze it with more gear, um, right now I have been using just the new shit amplifier, the Magnus uh, for uh, uh, analyzing this. And this has been a great combination, especially with that black periap cable, just all black everywhere. It's been awesome. Now my personal preference is for a little bit more warmth and a little bit more bass. So as this driver breaks in a little bit, I'm hoping that that kind of starts to increase a little bit, but we'll see. Otherwise this is seeming like a pretty fair option in the market. But I think as of right now, it is just that, a fair option. It is pretty much perfectly priced where I would place it uh, without blowing anything else out of the water. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, my name is Josh, signing off.